Okay, now let's look at a different way of organizing harmony, another kind of system. As the 20th century went on, it was clear that harmony was getting more and more complicated for many composers. And at a certain point, people started thinking, wouldn't it be handy if I had a list of all possible chords? Well, a list of all chords with every possible spacing and every possible orchestration would be crazily large. So we make up the list with a few limitations. First of all, we're going to use a concept called pitch class. It's really simple. Pitch class just means that G, no matter which octave it occurs in, is just considered one note. Okay? In other words, we, instead of speaking of the pitch G, the pitch class G means any G in any octave. Transpositions don't count as separate chords. So for example, if I do this, and then since they're both the same pattern of intervals, they don't count as separate chords. They're the count of the same chord, just transposed. So again, we're going to categorize those as the same chord. Then intervals, since we can move around in different octaves, interval inversions really don't mean very much. In other words, a third in terms of the chord is considered the same thing as the sixth going down. Okay, so what we do is we talk about an interval class, the same thing as a pitch class. A pitch class is all possible notes with that name. An interval class is the combination of an interval and its inversion. So interval class one is a minor second or a major seventh. Interval class two is a major second or a minor seventh. Three is a minor third or a major sixth. Four is a major third or a minor sixth. Five is a perfect fourth or perfect fifth. And interval class six is the tritone. And that's it, because if we go beyond there, we're back into the inversions. So there are only six interval classes possible. The last thing we need to understand about making this list is we need something that we might call a normal form. In other words, since the list ignores all possible spacings, we have to find a way to sort of compress them all into one octave. Normal form, sometimes called the prime form, basically means you take the notes of the chord, you squeeze them into the smallest possible space with the smallest intervals first. Let's look at an example to make that clear. In example nine, I have a five note chord. Okay, well, if I squeeze all those notes into one octave, the first thing I do is I do... Okay, so now we've got them all in one octave, but the total range covered is from B to A, that's a seventh. But as you'll be able to see, we can squeeze it smaller than that. If I start on D sharp, I can go D sharp, E, G sharp, A, B. So that squeezes it into a sixth. The first interval is a minor second, then a major third, then a minor second, then a major second. However, I can squeeze it smaller than that. If I take the same intervals that I start on G sharp, I have a minor second, a major second, a major third, and a minor second. The point is we want the smallest intervals at the beginning. Both and each fill in a minor, a minor sixth total, but in the first one, the second interval is a third. Here, the second interval is a second. So this one here, the third one that we see in example nine, is considered the normal form. The numbers under the notes are just the number of semitones from the starting note. So the starting note is G sharp. A is one, that is one semitone above G sharp. B is three, i.e. three semitones above G sharp. D sharp is seven, seven semitones above D, G sharp and eight. So this set would be named zero, one, three, seven, eight. That's the normal form of this set. Okay. So that's just the way sets are named. Like I said, squeezed into one octave and then into the smallest interval possible with the shortest, with the smallest intervals at the beginning. Okay, and that's example nine. The complete list of chords we're talking about with these normal forms that I just showed you, the one that's used most often was put together by a music theorist called Alan Fort, and it's easily available on the web. There are actually many sites with it. We're gonna use the one on Wikipedia. It was just, it's called the list of pitch class sets on Wikipedia. But even if you can't find that one, there are plenty of other sites. If you just do a search on list of pitch class sets, you'll find several sites which give the list. If we come back to example nine, remember it was a, a set of five notes, zero, one, three, seven, eight. So if you look above example nine, I've marked set number five dash 20. What does that mean? It's a five note set and it's number 20 in the list. That's all it means. 20 just refers to the place on the list, okay? You see below that I have V, 2, 1, 1, 2, 3, 1. What's V? That's the interval vector. 
the interval vector is just all the intervals possible within that one set. Let's just be clear about that. If, I, for example, V says 2, the first number, that means two examples of interval class 1. That means two minor seconds from G sharp to A and D sharp to E. One example of interval class 2, that means only one major second, and so forth. In other words, the vector tells you the interval content of the set. Well, you might say, why bother? We'll see you in a moment.